Yeah, this is Carl from National RV Detroit. I'm going to show you through your new Palomini, <laughs> your Palomini by Palomino 178. Okay, I'm here on the door side by the rear. And uh, this is your swing out bracket for your grill. Okay, it just hangs right on here. You have to connect the LP line for your grill. So right here is a quick connect. If we can see it here, right there. There we go. Sorry about my camera work here. So let me see if I can get better light here. Hold on. That better. There we go. Okay. So you basically just plug the end in. Here is the end. Let me just get a so you get a picture of it. Okay, and it just goes in here like this. It's hard to do this one hand with one hand, so I'm doing the best I can and locks in there like that. Okay? And then you're just gonna turn the gas on right here. Okay? And this other end attaches to your grill the same way. Okay, so you have to do that before you uh can grill. Okay, let me get back up here. All right. So you've got a power awning with a LED light strip. You got fold out steps that are very sturdy. You can fold it back into the trailer. Just make sure you have the door open like that far before you fold them in or out. Also, when you're on a uneven terrain, you see this the legs got holes in them here. If you can see that. And there's a pin right here. So you can pull this pin out and slide the legs up and down to the length you need in case your campsite's not real level. Okay? You have a just an AC out here, two plugs, outside speakers, crank down stabilizer jacks, one on each corner, and they are operated with this three-quarter inch crank. You can use a three-quarter inch socket on an electric drill if you want. That's what most people use these days. Your your cord, your power cord is a 30 amp cord. So you, we give you this adapter so you can adapt it down and so you can plug it in at home to your 15 amp system. Keep in mind if you plug it into a 15 amp system you can't use your air conditioner because it'll it'll eventually so pop a circuit breaker because it draws the AC draws too many amps for a 15 amp service. Okay, That's your dump hose. This is just a Ah, let me get away from the shadow here. This is just a, a charge or a, a port to hook up a solar battery charger. Okay. Um, if you choose to get one, this one's a Fury in, on brand and you, it'll plug right in there and you can charge your battery. Okay. Deep cycle marine battery, a 20 pound LP tank. Okay. That is your LP regulator there. You've got a tongue jack with a crank okay this is your exterior shower it's hot and cold water I know you can't see this very well but this camera is, has limited abilities here now this is where you hook your city water up right here that's what you're going to do most of the time um, but if you go to an older state park for example, that doesn't have plumbing on the campsite but has a fill station when you first go into the park. You can fill your onboard tank with water right there. And um, there's an electric pump inside and you can just uh, pump the water. It pressurizes the whole system. So therefore, you can, when you're going someplace without city water, you can still use the toilet and the shower and the sink and that sort of thing, okay? This is your water heater on the outside. It runs on gas. The switch to operate is on the inside. That's where you drain it right there. You got a, it's a 1 in 1 16 socket you have to get to pull that plug to drain it. Always let the pressure out right here before you pull the plug out or else it'll shoot out of there like a cannonball. Okay. Um, you do have to bypass the water heater. I can't get only go into limited detail here. Here's something you're going to have to educate yourself on if you don't already know. Um, you can take it in and have it done or you can do it yourself. It's very simple to learn. But the bottom line is when you pump antifreeze into the system in the fall, you can't get antifreeze into the water heater, so you have to bypass it in the back. I'll, I'll give you a basic idea how to do that when we get inside. 
but you never can get antifreeze into the water heater because it'll leave a foul taste and a, a foul smell and you'll never get rid of it. Okay, so your dump valves, you've got um, two gray tanks on this one. This one here is a, called a galley tank, but it's still a gray tank, right? You go where a bridge like this, if you can see that, that gate valve slides in it. Oh, that's shut right there. So your hose goes on here and then the other end goes into the dump station and that dumps your galley tank, which is a gray tank. Then, over here, you have your, I'm gonna close these here, you have a gray and a black. The black tank is toilet water and waste. The gray tank is sink and shower water. In this case, it'll be your vanity and your, your vanity sink and your shower. That one up there, it'll be your sink, okay? Your, your galley sink. So basically what you'll do here is you'll uh, hook up your hose, put it in the dump station, and you'll dump the black first. Then after it dumps, you'll dump the gray. The reason you do it that way is because the black, or the gray water is cleaner than the black water, obviously. Um, so uh, you'll just dump the gray second to help wash it out. All right? Okay. You've got to slide out. This is just a service panel for your refrigerator. You don't really have to go in there. It's just for servicing. This little hose should always be hanging out. That's for condensation, so it drains outside. This is your power cord, sometimes referred to as a shore cord. It's 25 feet long. Like I said, you do get an adapter inside to adapt it down at home. Uh, it's got a little LED there. I don't know if you can see it's lit up, but it tells you that you can always tell when you've got power up to this point anyway. It's easy to diagnose if you don't have power. Okay, this is just a coax through for a campground cable. It goes into the entertainment area. Okay, that housing is, is this means this camera or this trailer is pre-wired for a backup camera. So this one's made by Furion. If you get one, it has to fit into that housing. We do sell them here. You can talk to our parts people if you're interested in it. Um, basically, when you turn on your running lights, it'll activate the camera. And you can see behind you when you're backing up or when you're going down the road, whatever you want to do. Also, while we're looking up, you have to go up three times a year and inspect the roof of the trailer. This goes with every trailer ever made. So, uh, you're going to go up there in the spring and you're going to go up there in the fall. And then you figure you'll go up there once in the middle of the summer. You walk around, you look at all the seals. Everything has lap sealing on it up there. And you're just checking to see if any separation or cracking is starting. Um, some year, sometime, you're going to go up there and you're going to see something starting. And you'll get, when you do that, you get it taken care of or, or do it by yourself. But you have to, if you don't know, you'll have to educate yourself a bit on it. It's easy enough to do. But either way, it has to be taken care of or else you get water into the, into the building materials and that's a bad thing. So you have to inspect the roof. And three times a year is what's recommended, okay? All right, and this is just the vent and makeup here for your furnace, okay? All right, so let's go inside. This is your grill. It's just sitting on the floor here, but it hangs right on the, the swing out bracket that I showed you. Okay. This is your power converter. So this, this converts 110 AC down to 12 volt DC. So some things have to run on AC power in a trailer, like the air conditioner and the microwave, that sort of thing. So you've got regular household type circuit breakers there, and they're labeled. Okay, and then the rest of the power is converted into 12 volt DC over here. You've got automotive type fuses um, that run the, that that are for the DC. Everything that runs on DC, the lighting, the motors inside, the furnace motor, the slide out, all those type of things run on DC. Um, all and if they blow, you'll, they'll light up, and you can actually see them through this perforated plastic here. Okay, this is also a battery tender, so it'll keep your battery charged as long as you're plugged in. Uh, to shore power, it'll keep your battery charged, so you uh, always got a fully charged battery. Okay. Your your cooktop, you're just going to turn it to light, and you're going to use a, a lighter and light it. It's that simple. The sink works like any other sink. Some of the button or the lights here, you have a button in the middle for the LEDs to light them up. Um, we also have some a switch here for the awning light, and the main light switch here but again even these will have a button on them so you can select them as you choose all right well I'm here before we put the slide room out in the uh, awning I'll show you that I told you about the water pump 
You know, you can pump your own water. You also use the water pump to winterize. You turn that on here. Okay, you're only going to use this if you're if you're pumping your own water out of your fresh water tank. You know, if you got city water, it's already pressurized, so you don't have to do anything. To light your water heater here, you're just going to go like that. Um, it lights automatically. You may always make sure there's water in the tank before you turn the heater on. It's very important. Um, these are your levels. So you see your battery's totally charged. Even though it's plugged in, you should always check it when you're not plugged in. Now these, this is still being winterized, so it's, it's, there's some water in the system. So right now it's showing you there's a, in the fresh water tank, there's a third filled with water. Um, as it fills up, it'll graduate up in one third increments till it's full. Uh, the black tank is empty. Your gray, first gray tank is empty, and your second gray tank, which they call the galley tank in here, is empty. So they'll graduate up. Once you get to two thirds, you're gonna have to start thinking about dumping the, dumping the tanks. Okay. You can extend your awning here just by pushing that and holding it. You can see it's going out. And basically, you take it out till you can see the awning tube. It's a metal tube, so you just keep an eye on it. And uh, we're getting pretty close right there. You can see it right there, so you'll stop. And that's out, okay? You can also pitch this by pulling down on here. You should always straighten it out before you put it in. Now, you never leave this awning out unattended. So if you're not at the campsite, you roll it in. That's that's the rule of thumb because wind can come up quick and, it, and a lot of pressure builds up underneath. It can get damaged in just a matter of, of seconds. So if you're not going to be at the campsite, you just roll it in. Okay? And next, we have the slide out, which is very simple. Slide out, out. And out it goes. there you go so now it's out okay your microwave works like any other microwave there's nothing special about it okay the refrigerator is a as a three-way refrigerator it'll work on LP gas 12 volts DC and 110 AC this is the control panel here so this is on and off now it's on um, you will select what what source you want um, auto if you put it on auto, it'll search for 110 AC first, right? And if there's no AC power, it'll switch to gas. Um, if you want to dedicate it, see right now, because there is AC power, that one lit up, showing you you're running on AC. You can also shift it to DC, so if you're pulling it down the road, you can use your battery and your alternator and your tow vehicle to, to, uh, to uh, light it up. And then gas, right there, you can light it dedicated on gas. You can't pull it down the road on gas. Usually you're going to have it on auto and running on AC. That's pretty typical. And you'll have the, um, the temperature all the way up. I mean, if it gets cold outside, uh, you might have to back it off a bit. But generally speaking, uh, it's going to just be up all the way. All right, to open it, you push here and pull here. This one needs a slight adjustment, I noticed. So by the time you get here today, it'll be fixed. Here, let me set this down. We'll adjust that latch for you. That should have been done already, but apparently uh, I walked in the middle of the prep here, so it'll be taken care of. Um, this GFCI here, all the, all the plugs, even the one on the outside, are wired through it, so if you have to reset it, uh, the, the plugs, you do it right here. This is the carbon monoxide and LP gas detector. It should always be green like that. It detects carbon monoxide buildup or LP gas leak. Very important, so it should always be green. If it goes off, you go outside the trailer, shut off the gas, and figure out what's going on, okay? Now, I got the, the bed up here so you can see um, where the water heater is and the bypass valves I told you about. Okay, so here we go. To bypass this, um, let me start this way. When the handles of the valves are parallel with a line, that means that line is open. Right, you have three valves. This is the input to the water tank. This is the output to the water tank, and this one's called a bypass valve. There's a line that goes between the cold and hot water line. All right. So if you to put it in bypass, you would close the in and the out, and then you would open 
at the bypass. If you can see that, I know there's a hose in the way, it's kind of hard to see, but... So therefore, the water, or the antifreeze in this case, when you're pumping in, and it can't go into the water heater, because when it gets to that valve, it stops, so it circles, loops through this bypass line and goes through the rest of the system, not... So antifreeze will go everywhere but the water heater. All right, so that's, that's bypass mode. When you're in normal camping mode, you would shut the bypass line and then open the in and the out. And therefore, the water heater will fill and empty normally. Cold water will come in, heat up, and then come out hot at the top. So that's basically where you bypass it. Um, if you look at here, there's, there's valves for your, um, your tank to shut your tank off. Okay, and you'll use this uh, water pump to draw the antifreeze in. It's something you'll have to educate yourself a bit on, but you'll use the, uh, you'll use the, let me get the hose up here for you, the pump. I can tell you just a bit here. This, this line, you'll take the cap off and you'll put it into a gallon of antifreeze, right? So you set a gallon there and you'll put it inside. Then you'll make sure that this valve is open right and the valve going to your tank is closed it'll be just the opposite of the way it is right now therefore when you the pump is running it'll pull antifreeze through this line from the from the um the antifreeze bottle and pump it throughout the system uh, right now it's set up to draw from the water tanks for normal camping but um if you uh if you're going to winterize it you'll just switch the valves basically reverse them so it's, it's pretty simple but you have to bypass it, okay? All right. I hope that made sense to you. Okay. So, there's a pole, right, that goes in here, and then into the bottom of the, there's a pole right there, into the bottom of the table, so you set the table up. You gotta remove the table before you bring the slide out in, because it slides over this, this base here, so uh, keep that in mind. Your blinds, you just pull down. Now, if you're if you're traveling, let's say you're out west somewhere, and the the blinds just start falling down on their own. Basically, these are tension lines. The tighter the line, the tighter this is. So that just means you have to if it's coming down, you have to tighten it a little bit. So you would pull this line through about a half inch, tie another knot in it to make it a little shorter and tighter, and it'll solve your problem. All right. So air conditioner just works like a window air conditioner in the sense that it's got a temperature knob, and then it's got a uh, two fan speeds and two air conditioner speeds. All right, your radio plays DVDs, CDs. You can stream off this USB. You put, you know, all your, all your albums on one stick and take them with you. Um, you got two zones, zone one and zone two. And that's inside and outside the trailer. Um, and you can hook up with Bluetooth from your phone or tablet, so you can uh, play the music off your your phone. So it has a lot of features for camping. You can hang a TV right here on this. There's a backer plate right here. That's what it's telling you. That red light is showing you that the, the signal booster for your digital antenna is on. That's where you hook up your cable and your, or your sound and video, depending on how you're going to hook it up. And um, that's uh, obviously power. Okay. I think I've covered it here. Oh, no, I haven't, have I? See, I got ahead of myself. This is the thermostat for the furnace. You're just going to click it on. That's all you do. You can probably hear it turn on. When you shut it off, you bring it to the left and then click it. As soon as you do that, the flame will go out, but it will continue to run for a minute or two to purge itself. That's normal. Okay. We still haven't cleaned in here totally. Uh, I got a little ahead of myself here, so it'll be spruced up by the time you get it. Shower works like any other shower. The sink works like any other sink. Now, the toilet the main rule of thumb is you can't use it dry. There always has to be water in it and chemical in it. Okay? Down here is a pedal. You can see it dumped the water there. Normally if we were hooked up to city water, the water would be swirling into the, into the black tank right now. The black tank is directly below. So what you do when you get to the campsite, you hook up your power and your water. Then you'll come in here and you'll take your chemical. Whatever chemical you're using, um, uh, they're lick some come in liquid some are pre-measured packets some come with a in powder with a scoop depends on what brands you get um, So you read the directions and find out you know if you use one scoop or whatever you use for your product And you'll put that right in here and then you'll step on it and you'll let about a gallon of water or So maybe two at tops gallon or two of water just 
just swirl into the tank with the chemical, then it's ready to be used. Um, then uh, another important thing to remember is when, when you flush it, it'll only fill to water about up to here. That's just so it can't slush out when you're dry, pulling it down the road. So what you do is, there's, if you notice, I'll try to show you here, there's a, there's a space here where you can push it down without opening the trap. When you do that, it'll activate the water, so you can actually fill it up as high as you want before you use it. You just have to remember that um, uh, you have to do this each time before you use it. Set the level in it by using the pedal here, okay? So that's it. Just never use it dry. That's the key. You've got a vent with a fan here. You always want to run the fan with the shower because you want to pull the humidity out of this trailer. It's very tight. Okay. Now I think we've covered everything. Let me look around to make sure I didn't miss anything. I think we're in good shape here. Okay. Yes, that's it. All right. So, um, you can call us for, you know, we'll talk you through things over the phone. Uh, there each, each, uh, appliance in here has its own manual uh, you can refer to that you can look at online videos each manufacturer will have its videos try to stick with the manufacturers videos so there's always a way to educate yourself and um, there we are so thanks for purchasing an RV from National RV Detroit and thank you